Good morning, good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Randy. Nice to see you guys coming on. Penny, nice to see you. Evelyn, great. Good to be together. This is great. Sandra text in. Good morning. Randy text in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, it is a good morning. And his mercies are new every morning. We know that. We can have confidence in that. The Word of God tells us that, and we're grateful. Good morning, Judy. Nice to see you coming in. And uh, you're all friends. Appreciate everybody. And uh, uh, we're here to encourage each other. Welcome to the 40-day worship challenge. We're on day, <clears throat> excuse me, we're on day number 33. It's amazing. We've got another week to go for this challenge. We'll have finished our second one. That's great. That's awesome. Vicki and Bill, nice to see you. Uh, uh, Larice, nice to see you. If I miss you, I apologize. Molly, good to see you coming on. Susan's right here. <laughs> it's great. We're together, and uh, our shields are linked. I have my mug. Which one do I have today? Better. Better, together, stronger together. And two people are better than one. We can help each other succeed. And I want to say I so appreciate every single one of you, just every one of you. And what God's doing in our heart and what God's doing in our life is precious. It's awesome. It's, it's amazing. I, I, I put down here, it's the amazing process of transformation. And we, we said this earlier that transformation is a byproduct of spending time with God. This isn't self-help. This isn't God helps those who help themselves. This is, this is God helps those who ask him for help. And that's our basic need in prayer is our need for God. And the first most used word for prayer is the word surrender. It's the word to come uh, face to face with God and make an exchange. And so we're really, really experiencing a prayer life of, of intimacy with God as we meet with him, surrendering our will to his will, receiving his love and opening up our interior, our heart to the work of the Holy Spirit. And God's already doing something amazing in your life by just spending 15 minutes with the Lord every day. There's a transformational process going on. I'm 13 years meeting with the Lord every day and I'm just learning how to quiet myself and be quiet and let the noise that's in my head just silence, just get quiet and just receive a direction. There's, there's so much noise. There's so much activity, so much that tries to compete for our heart, the condition of our heart. And we're learning just to surrender our heart in his presence. And we're reflecting together on what God is doing in us. That's the last few days we've been reflecting. And I wanted to just say, be sure to write down in your journal what God is saying and doing in your heart. Just begin to write down and you'll begin to see a pattern. You'll begin to see a process. You'll begin to see that God is very specific and works in very specific areas. He's working in one in my life right now. Uh, let's be grateful and thankful for all he is doing. First John 3, 8 says, For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil, that he might destroy the works of the evil one. The word destroy there in the Greek means to untie something or, unloose, or unloosen something. That's Rick Renner defined it that way. And I, I, I love that definition of untying because he's, he's, he's freeing us. He's letting us go from things that the enemy has had us bound. The Holy Spirit, let's put it this way, is untying places in our life that have been bound due to rejection, hurt, and pain. All of us have been rejected. That, that, that's, that's universal in some way. And we fear it like crazy because we don't want to be hurt and we don't like the pain of it. As you receive God's love every morning, this is what's so powerful. His love and acceptance defeats the woundings of rejection we have experienced in our life. That's, what, that's where the healing process is happening. I'm going through one of those right now where the Lord is showing me where, where I've been rejected and, and how much I fear that. And I'm in a situation now where I, I wasn't included and I, I just, I have this anxiety that comes up 
because and that took, Lord took me clear back to when I wasn't invited to a birthday party in the sixth grade. And I'm thinking, wow, this is deep and this is intimate and this is revealing, but it's true. I'm afraid to be rejected. And then I act out when I'm in that state if I don't allow the power of the Holy Spirit to help me to understand I'm already accepted. <laughs> it's not something I have to go after in God, it's something I already have. And yet the revelation of that has to be born out of the God's love and light inside of us. We're all accepted in the beloved. Let's just settle that. Ephesians 1.8 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. That this whole dynamic of acceptance in Christ is so big, so real. God is setting us free in the mornings as we are surrendering our will over to his will. He's healing our heart from those wounds and those places where we have felt hurt and where we have felt wounded, we can begin to open those areas up to the Lord. I didn't even see it till yesterday, but yet the love of God and the light of his presence comes in so graciously, as it says there, to begin to reveal the woundings and the hurts and the pains, and then we begin to act out from those, and we don't even know why we're doing what we're doing. Yet when we see it, God can reveal it and he can heal it through his love and acceptance of our lives. This is so amazing. I want to celebrate these victories in your life, what God's doing. I just felt like we should be celebrating something. And Colossians 2.15 says this, Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon, and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. That's what we're being set free from. The accusations and the torment of the enemy. And, and by the, and here, listen to this. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He, he literally displayed his victory over the enemy's powers. It was not, he was not their prisoner, <laughs> they were his. <laughs> we are going to make it hard. We, you and I collectively, are going to make it hard for any wrong, toxic, or negative rogue thought to get any kind of foothold in our life. We're going to take dominion over the areas the enemy has once influenced us and tormented us in. We're going to take back what God has for each of us. This is so powerful. Jesus made a spectacle of the enemy and we are walking with him and we don't have to fear rejection anymore because we're accepted in the blood. We will be rejected. That's just mankind and human nature and the way we treat each other. We can't help but that to be experienced even on a daily basis. But that's not where we are anchoring our, our hope. It's in the power of God's love and acceptance for us. Paul's prescription of this has a prescription for mental health, and it's in Philippians 4, 6 to 9. But, uh, but I see that our time has run out. So we're going to go in tomorrow. We're going to launch in to Paul's prescription for mental health, for, for the way we're going to battle, the way we're going to fight. I'm going to go through an acrostic through this last few days on sword and staying in the spirit and how we can fight and, and walk in the spirit and have all these dynamics going on. But for this morning, we have the victory. We're accepted in the beloved. God loves us. He cares about us and we can rest in him. Tomorrow we'll go into Philippians 4, 6 through 9. We'll talk about Paul's prescription for mental health. Uh, Psalms 108, we're gonna read uh, from our devotional, uh, one through five. Just, just let the word of God minister to your heart. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, liar and harp. 
I will wake the dawn with my song. That's what we're doing. The first 15, we're waking the dawn with a song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations. For your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the, the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. God is, 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 is helping us. He's gracing us with his love and his acceptance. Receive that today as I pray. Father, we just thank you for your love and acceptance of our life through the power of the blood and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you have brought us in. You've rent the veil. You've brought us into a relationship, Lord, where once we were afar off, but now we're near, we're close through what you did for us to bring us back into a deep and intimate relationship with you. Lord, as we open up our heart to you each morning, we thank you for the love that you pour in. As we surrender our will to your will, we thank you for your healing power. Lord, wherever we've been rejected, hurt, or wounded, we ask for the work of the Holy Spirit to begin to heal that area through the understanding and the revelation of our acceptance in you. Lord, let it all begin there in you. Lord, the righteous run into you and they're safe. We run into you today. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Well, blessings to you today. Enjoy your time with the Lord. This is meant just to be a primer to that time. And have an amazing day. And I'll see you again tomorrow, day number 34. Bless you. Bye.